you know, there's such a wide potential of how many instruments can be used in a practice, but tuning forks were one of the most popular. Um, I wasn't attracted to them early in my career because I was coming more from the shamanic wisdom traditions, and tuning forks were more of a modern thing and seemed like they were being used more from a scientific or more standardized therapeutic approach, which wasn't part of my own training and uh, inclinations. But um, as we began the sound conferences, I started inviting John Bolu and others who work with tuning forks into the conferences and just became stunned at how beautiful and rich and diverse the tuning fork world is, how easy it is to use them, and how um, effective they are. So I highly, highly love them and support them at this point. But there are so many different ones we would take all four days if we were just trying to cover all the different tuning forks. And we're going to take some basic ones and go through some possibilities, but this is just a drop in the ocean of all of the potentials. Even all the tuning forks we carry, this is just a little bit of them. And I think I'm going to start with this. There are basically two different tuning forks. One is weighted. It has these little, literally these weights, these little round things that are um, screwed into the top, and unweighted. That's the basic difference in the tuning forks. The forks generally have two tines, they're called T-I-N-E-S, that come down and then a single at the base. You hold them at this base by the single tine. If you try to hold them where the dual tines are, you stop the vibration, so that doesn't work real well. And the primary difference is that the unweighted ones are louder than the weighted ones. But the weighted ones carry the resonance better, so they will carry the resonance into tissue better than the unweighted ones. So these are two different pitches. And in this case, this is um, a 256 C, 256 hertz, which I believe is the tuning for a 432 hertz C. And then um, a 136.1 ohm, which is the tuning for the ohm frequency. There's a lot of math and science around the frequency of the earth and the uh, Schumann resonance of the earth and so forth relating to ohm. Um, I relate to ohm because my background began a lot with Indian musicians and then the whole music and spiritual spectrum of Indian philosophy and the nature of ohm. So I, you know, if I picked one tuning fork that was weighted, I would pick an ohm fork myself, but that's my own inclinations and biases speaking. It's not that it's better than anything else. I just have an inclination towards that. And then if I were picking one unweighted tuning fork, I wouldn't <coughs> pick just one. I would pick what's called the body tuners from John's work, John Bolu, Biosonics. Um, it's a C and G. It's back to the perfect fifth. So we have <coughs> the perfect fifth. Just rest into that if you can. This is the fourth octave C and fourth octave G. Oh, yeah. And that's more than enough for me. And I told you, he started his research um, working at Bellevue Mental Hospital in New York and found that it was very helpful with um, therapeutics for mood disorders. Um, he went much further than that. I told you about the puffing cycle of nitric oxide that he studied with these. But just listening to these, morning or night for three to five minutes, he says, will help bring balance to the nervous system and then that creates the restorative qualities of the body through homeostasis. So um, he's done a lot of different research you can find on his site or you can find his forks and books on our site. He does a lot of good things teaching how to use the forks and background to sound and consciousness. This tool, the body tuners, I probably have more psychotherapists report to me that they take these to let their clients just listen for a few minutes at the beginning of their time together and that it brings the client into that place of presence more able to come in and do the work. So a lot of beautiful reasons to do those. There is a company um, 
called Sound Therapeutics. It focuses just on the ohm frequency and related frequencies. So um, let me find the lower ohm here. This is an octave of, so that would be um, 136.1, half of that's going to be like 68.5 more or less. So these are an octave apart. Can you hear the lower one okay? And an octave is a beautiful interval to use, but then they created something called the Luna Forks, which for a long time were my favorite forks. And they're an octave apart. But you bring in the ohm forks, and now you've got a fifth in an octave, which is really nice to work with, working with those fundamental harmonics. And again, when you're working with these lower pitch forks, it tends to bring the vibration into tissue more directly. So those of you, the, the forks have been shown to work very well with pain relief and uh, anxiety and stress, things like this. And going directly, not into pain centers, but around pain. Like if I had joint pain here, I might use a weighted fork and go around the outside of the pain, like the, extent, the extended area of the pain, and just strike it when I feel the vibration ending, but just kind of walk around this big circle around the pain center and slowly make that a spiral coming in closer and closer, talking to the person, or if I'm doing it on myself, a lot of people report really good effect from this. Um, working around the pain center, kind of spiraling in until I can come as close to the pain as I can without causing more pain, but it tends to disperse. Those of you who understand how to work energetically with different tools and with sound, this can be understood as a transceiver, both transmitting and receiving energy and information. So I could use it in collaborating with the tuning fork and sound and just asking it to release. I could even ask the client to collaborate with me. Why don't you just imagine that this tuning fork's like an antenna and you're just letting the pain go right out the tuning fork. And whether this is um, um, approvable science or not, we know that the mind-body connection and how beneficial that can be to have people working with you to uh, imagine effect from your therapeutic work. So releasing, or if you wanted to go to the other extent, what would you bring in then afterwards? What type of luminous qualities or other healing qualities might you bring in to help uh, with the client's disposition? And John teaches that also a great deal, and he has specific forks, starting with um, a, f a fourth octave C going to, I'm sorry, a third octave C going to a second octave C and down to the first octave C, which gets pretty large and deep for me, but um, it carries the vibration even more into the tissue. So um, I don't know if you can hear all of those. There's the deeper one. Is that audible? So the, he calls these um, the auto tuners, which are intended um, to use for um, um, pain relief and um, connective tissue um, work. and all in a similar way, but the deeper the vibration, the deeper the pitch, the deeper the vibration that carries into tissue more readily. Which one? Mm -hmm. mm. So, as we got into the tuning fork world, we started filling a few gaps with them. I became really heavily invested in it when uh, a friend and colleague came down from Canada um, who was working with a master geometrist and sound technician whose name is Ibrahim Karim. And he is so respected in his field that he's hired by major corporations such as Air Canada. Air Canada hires him to clear the energy of their um, airplanes. And I'm told that many pilots can come on an airplane and go, oh, he's been here. They can feel the difference. Now, that's an airplane pilot, which is not necessarily the most um, leaning towards 
um, holistic therapy type of work or esoteric understanding. But one of the vibrational tools that he uses is a particular um, frequency. It's proprietary, but it's around the third octave C sharp, G sharp. And he says that when these two frequencies are combined, that no non-beneficial energy can e coexist in that field of resonance. Um, so this friend colleague was coming down for a program and um, came into our home and was playing with one of my cats and discovered a cancerous lump on the cat. I didn't know it was cancerous for certain at the time, but I took it directly into a vet who said that he just had a couple of weeks to live. She started applying this around the lump, and when she left, she left them with me, and I continued it, and I took the cat in two weeks later. Um, it might have been a little longer than that when I took it in, and the vet couldn't find any sign of the cancer. That's when I decided to start working with tuning forks. Now, that's just one anecdotal story, please keep that in mind. I'm not suggesting that this is a cure for cancer, but the effectiveness of that simple therapy was so profound, I kept doing that for six months and there was no sign of cancer to come back in the cat until he decided to not let me do this anymore. I tried to do it and he would just get out. And um, within a couple of months, the cancer had come back and he passed. But the vet was also very amazed by what she saw. Um, and these are called our clear path forks. So we feel they're very good for that spectrum of wanting to clear energy. I told you about the gamma frequency research at MIT relating to Alzheimer's, that um, ma laboratory mice that have had um, Alzheimer's created as a disease and um, um, respond to light and sound therapy where a 40 hertz pulse is, uh, su they're subjected to a 40 hertz pulse, either in light, just blinking on and off 40 times, or sound, resonating 40 times a second. And that that Im improves the, the production of a protein that eats plaque in the brain and improves memory and learning. So I started playing with that frequency and created um, a set of forks in the gamma binaural based on the ohm. I use the ohm as a base because I like the sound of ohm, 136.1. I just went up 40 hertz to 176.1 and created a gamma binaural. We offer a very uh, a large variety of binaural forks. I mean, the clear path actually are a binaural in a similar range of pitch. But we have theta and other binaurals that we create, as well as harmonics, for all the reasons we've been exploring. But again, tuning forks are so simple. You know, when, when I travel to programs, I have a vehicle filled with instruments. Um, one of my friends and former students is a major practitioner in tuning forks now. She developed her own practice, and um, she can walk around with a briefcase with everything she needs. So they're very lightweight, transportable, easy to use, and very effective. So they're really beautiful. John recommends not giving direct brain stimulation with the tuning forks. Other practitioners say it's fine. I am always ca cautious about overstimulation of the auditory nerves whenever I'm near the ears with anything, but these are pretty quiet, so they're fairly easy to work with. More recently, um, Dorothy has been working with a group um, that is focused on the 111 hertz for a variety of reasons, but specifically because one of the temples of the Great Mother in Malta, known as the hypo Hypogeum, um, has been researched probably more than any ancient site for the sound effect, other than possibly the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid. The Hypogeum in Malta is a temple complex both above ground and below ground, and carved into stone three stories deep is a sacred dome. It's, it's formed to the metrics of the sacred geometries, and any building created in th the resonance of the sacred geometries is an incredible sound chamber. 
you've ever been in a geodesic dome, you'll know this. And many people build geodesic domes for the sound effect. It, it enhances sound more than you can imagine. So many cultures, it is believed, intentionally built uh, temples and chambers that would be enhanced by sound, but they're also enhanced energetically. Science has a way of measuring the background field effect and the EM field of these sites. And the background field of this particular dome is resonating at 111 hertz. So um, to us, that's, that's like honoring the voice of the Great Mother when we work with that particular frequency. And we really, really love it. 111 hertz is um, a second octave A. Um, and it's hard to get crystal bowls in that resonance, though it can be done. But the tuning forks are very easy to make in that resonance. This is that 111 hertz resonance. So what is my relationship to sound and the instruments if I'm realizing that this is the sound, the background field resonating in a, a sacred site dedicated to the Great Mother? That opens my heart to that possibility of working with that sound. So just the type of thing I look for in instruments is how do I resonate with them? How does the whole concept of how they're made and constructed, what the intentions are in their making, this all is very important to me in choosing the instruments I work with. And I feel if my heart is open to the instrument, then that's going to open me to the practice I do, and my clients are going to benefit from that open heart. So why would I not look for that type of instrument? That's why I listen to all the different mallets when I'm playing bowls, gongs, drums, etc., because I want the voice quality that speaks to me and will speak through me in my practice. So we've created these with uh, the perfect fifth and the octave. We happen to not have the fifth with us, but this is the octave above. So that's 222 hertz, which would be a third octave A. And that would be tuned in the 444 spectrum of tuning, which many people work with, in part for this reason, because of different work coming out of the 111 hertz. So it's another tuning, and people get whole sets of bowls tuned to the 444 tuning rather than 440 or 432. This is part of their understanding of why they want to work with that. This also works in the same frequency as 528, which has been promoted as the frequency of love in the fifth octave C. Not trying to give you too many numbers, but I'm just sharing with you some of the information about why people tune to different frequencies. Again, as we've tried to share with you throughout this training, to us it's much more beneficial to understand how to work with sound and consciousness and how to generate fields of coherence and legitimate practices to help draw others into those fields of coherence than to worry about what pitch or tuning you use. And these are some of my favorite to listen to at this point. And here again I have weighted forks so I can apply that directly. Dorothy's going to share you something about a full um, eight-tone, it's called the solar spectrum uh, set, but it's like an eight-tone chakra set also. It's the pitches of the major scale. She's going to show you a particular technique that John taught us that she loves. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you, you might see on the um, bottom of this, um, we, we've created something we call a crystal attenuator. Dorothy's going to show you one in a moment. Well, she'll show you this one up close. Maybe she'll show you both. Um, she designed this particular type, though other companies make some. Um, but it attaches to any of the tuning forks that we sell. It, it fits. Some other tuning forks, it may not. But what it is, this is to work especially with the weighted forks. And what we found is that by taking any flat stone or crystal and applying it where you want to apply pressure with the tuning fork, you hold it against the body and then apply this, you can try this yourself. You can see it just enhances the vibratory quality immensely according to the size of the crystal or stone. 
Dorothy has done this with um, her hot stones and body work. And it just the, the vibration just spreads out across the whole surface of the stone. So this requires two hands. So we looked for a way to do single-handed work and created the attenuator. You might, did you show them the plain one? The plain I one, um, you'll see, um, it was her brainstorm to put the yeah, flower of life on the surface. It's, life. it's lasered um, on. Lasered on. And so the flower of life, it, you know, in esoteric terms, is the understanding encompassed in the whole wheel of life. The entirety of the cosmos is um, held within the, f the symmetry and geometry of the flower of life. The understanding of all wisdom of the cosmos resides in that symbol. And it's used universally in cultures all over the world from um, South and Central America to um, the Middle East, Africa, Europe, Asia, all over the world, people understood this symbol and what it meant and used it in their sacred art and temples and so forth. So to me, it's like, why, n why would we not work with that symbol of the great wholeness of life and the uniformity of life? So then we attach a crystal, whether it's rose quartz or amethyst or um, uh, purple turquoise or different, different stones, lapis, lazuli, and then you have that quality of stone to work with. And then you also can work with two of these at the same time and have that enhanced quality of the greater vibrational field from the attenuator. So I was about to let her show you this other technique, working with a whole set of forks. It's really beautiful. Here I have um, what's called a solar harmonic set. And it's... Um, just a, a scale, a C scale, and um, interesting way to work with a group of unweighted forks um, to affect a whole um, soundscape. This is a method that was taught to us by um, John Bellew. He holds, he puts up <laughs> several tuning forks in one hand, so here I've got four forks, and then he takes another fork, and he just gets them all ringing at once. And when you do that and wave it through the field, um, it's so effective because you can, you can actually just feel these waves of sound come through. So it sounds very um, ethereal and is not the usual kind of sound that you might hear if you were um, working with a group of people or doing a s some kind of sound bath situation. But there are those kinds of ethereal sounds that I really love to weave in to um, to a session because um, I think they're really important sounds to allow people it, it it's like it makes them curious about what am I hearing and where is that sound coming from and and why am I perceiving it coming from different directions or you know these waves of sound so I think it helps people to um, have the experience uh, a fuller experience of sound, experiencing a fuller spectrum of sound. So they s begin to understand um, that sound, you know, moves through us. Sound moves through this field and has a great effect. <laughs> 